Preacher. In the mid-90s, DC Comics' Vertigo imprint was unbeatable. They had titles like Sandman and Hellblazer. They had a lot of great British writers. One of the books that they did that was just fantastic was Preacher. It was by writer Garth Ennis and artist Steve Dillon. It was a supernatural road trip. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because now it's a TV show. Let's see how many of the tropes that we can come across. And I've got this little Preacher guy here. Hey, that's Jesse Custer, the main character of Preacher. Authentic beard and collar, just like me. What we're going to do as we come across tropes, we're going to strip this Jesse. We're going to just... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play strip poker with a Ken doll. I've had better ideas. Here are some of what writer Garth Ennis would use in a typical issue of Preacher. Jesse's power making somebody do something literally. Tulip fires a perfect shot. Cassidy rips somebody's throat out. A perfect racist or a perfect misogynist. Just that loathsome villain. Inbreeding. Incest. Somebody pisses or shits themselves or on somebody else. A bad guy who happens to be into bondage. A long-suffering secretary or assistant. Rape or sodomy. Jesse acting 100% macho. Genital trauma in a fight. An appearance by Arseface. Head exploding. A corrupt institution. Villain is permanently scarred or impaired. Jesse just neglects to use his power. Homophobia. American patriotism. God or angels being jerks. A dead celebrity in a vision or a flashback. Cursing for humor. Bone breaking the skin during a fight. A villain throwing a tantrum. All right, let's go to a comic book store. We're going to buy a random issue of Preacher. I predict we'll see at least five of these tropes in any random issue. So I'm here in Portland, Oregon, and we're going to look for a Preacher back issue in Things from Another World. It was established in the 80s by Mike Richardson, who also established Dark Horse Comics. Very cool. It was the time of the Preacher When the story began Okay, that was a fun visit. I ended up picking up this trade paperback, Preacher, uh, until the end of the world. As usual, I've got a list of tropes. I've got about 25 here, and we'll slap them up on the wall as we come across them. We're going to read issue 10. I just ended up picking it at random. So let's dig in, and uh, we'll see how well poor little Jesse does. So this issue is uh, a little bit of Jesse Custer's origin story of how he became a priest. He and his girlfriend, Tulip, are prisoners at his family home. His family is a bunch of bad people, we'll come to learn. In this flashback to when Jesse was just a little kid, we first see him, uh, they would put him in a coffin at the bottom of the swamp just to punish him. They'd put him down there for days. So the family name is Langeville, and uh, basically Jesse Custer's grandma is the most evil piece of crap you could envision. Uh, but she believed hardcore in um, Christianity. So the family had their own version of it though, let's put that out there. Preacher's a blasphemous comic, but the Langevilles family version of Christianity is pretty weird and over the top, and it, obviously. Uh, and she has two henchmen, these just hicks, called Jody and TC. Jesse's one friend was his neighbor Billy Bob. Uh, Billy Bob is an example of inbreeding. And it should be noted that this is sort of the uh, stereotypical idea of inbreeding because if we looked at the actual biology, you don't become a mutant. So that's an example of inbreeding. Jesse's collar's coming off. A preacher no more. And right down here on the exact same page that we had the last trope, we have our next trope. Uh, TC is about to have sex with a farm animal. Sodomy. Little Jesse gonna lose a shoe. Unfortunately, Billy Bob was sleeping in the barn. He's found by TC when TC goes to take a piss. And of course he pisses all over Billy Bob. So that's an example of the next trope, uh, yeah, pissing, or getting pissed on. Oh no! Oh! Yep, okay, I'm taking clothes off of a doll. This is a really great idea. TC does, of course, catch uh, Billy Bob, and he kills him. So Jesse loses his only friend, tries to fight back, and 
here we are with our fourth trope, uh, genital trauma as Jesse kicks TC right in the junk. There we go, genital trauma. I guess Jesse's gonna lose his shirt. How do you do this? How do girls change their Barbie's clothes? This is hard. Jesse's down to his pants. Very cool. Now young Jesse Custer goes up against Jody and Jody absolutely destroys him to the point where he breaks Jesse's arm and of course the bone breaks through the skin. That was something Steve Dillon seemed really into. So there we go, bone breaks skin. So I guess that means Jesse loses his pants and I guess that's five tropes. So how does this... And uh, yeah, so Jesse has no genitals. Sorry. Anyway, Jesse finally has had enough at this point and he runs away from home. That's where he meets Tulip, who becomes his girlfriend. They get along for a short time, have basically a perfect romance. They love each other. And then one day while Tulip is out to get some lunch and Jesse's waiting for her on a park bench, TC and Jody show up. They found him, they tracked him down, and they bring him home. And Tulip never knows why. Uh, all she knows from her point of view is that Jesse abandoned her. So, kind of tragic, kind of sad. He grudgingly agrees to become a preacher for them to uh, do what the family wants. And the story ends on the final page with one last trope. Uh, Jody simply shoots Tulip in the head and we've got a head exploding. Head explodes. Six tropes in an average issue. I think that that's, that sounds about right. I think that while all 25 that we listed at the beginning would be pretty common to see, uh, you're not going, you're not likely to encounter too many more than five at a time. You might only encounter three or four. So, I've already stripped him naked, but I've got one more trope. I've got some Sculpey, and I think the only fair thing to do is to mold naked Jesse Custer some genitals. I don't know if Jesse would be circumcised. He needs balls or otherwise it just looks weird. Well, it already looks weird. What am I doing? Testicles. Well, I made just a mutant. This does not look good at all. So that was Preacher. It was one of my favorite books in my 20s. I remember that when I would go to the comic book store and get a stack of comics, it was always the first one that I would read. So at the time, I loved it. I look back on it now, and it's so over the top with some of its stuff. It's, it's kind of homophobic here and there. I don't really dig that. But I think that the overall story is really strong, and I think that AMC could potentially have a really good show on their hands. I also love the art, and I've got a page by Steve Dillon of Jesse Custer. That's, that's something I own because I really was into this. And I'll always have a special place in my heart for the story. I think that this opportunity to tell it on television to a more mainstream audience and ground it, I think it's actually a good thing to have a slightly different take. The comics will always be there. But um, maybe it's time for, for a, a slightly more modern, updated take. Some of this stuff seems a little dated in retrospect. Um, still, the art's fantastic. Uh, it's funny. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a comic worth checking out. That was a terrible idea. I'm sorry, folks. Trust me, next week you're going to want to tune in because I'm going to take a look at Rob Liefeld art, take a look at the tropes of an artist, and I'm going to eat progressively hotter peppers every time I witness one, so... Stay tuned for next week. Or don't. <laughs>